Shower the people. This is going to be a good one for you because it's pretty straightforward, but mostly it leaves a lot of room for personal interpretation of the song because you're not following a definitive piano part. You're just reading a chord progression. All right, so let's start by just understanding the chords themselves and the approach that I want you to take. It starts out with these dyads at the top. Dyads are just two-note chords. You may remember that. And in this case, the kind of dyads that I want you to play are just root and third. So no, not root and fifth, root and third. So first one's a G minor. So that's root and minor third. And then A minor, that's root and minor third. And then B flat major, root and major third. And then C, root and major third. And I'd like you to include the bass note with that. And you'll recognize that from the song. You can. You can. Is those are the pickup notes. So you kind of praise it like this. You can. And then play is beat one of the song. And that's where the F chord comes in. You see that the F and the play are lined up. Oh no, there it is, the C is on broken. Broken heart, and then G diminished. The notes in a G diminished chord, you just play a G chord, and you flat the, the, the third, and you flat the fifth. So it's like you play G minor, but then you flat the fifth also. But then you play a C sharp bass, just like it's written. G diminished over C sharp. That sounds really ugly out of context, doesn't it? It's like, what the heck is this Dracula chord doing in the song, right? But listen. Tell me song as well as you do but those are the chords okay. the idea here is just learn the chords and you can line them up with the lyrics at some point um just learn the chords i'm going to put a little extra burden on you for this assignment i want you maybe you could start off by learning the root position chords but i want you to start to recognize how if you play everything root position then you're doing a lot of unnecessary movement. I don't want to lead you by the hand with everything because I'm going to take away from you the opportunity to make some important discoveries on your own. So watch this. You can... That wasn't too bad. Even though that was a big jump, it sounded nice. C to D was nice. like tonal separation now. So what if we did this? I'm just pointing you in the right direction. I'm just giving you a head start. What if you, instead of starting on root position F, what if you start on second inversion F? So you go like this. By 
by bringing everything, that one little adjustment of playing second in version F put the harmonies closer together instead of just... And the trick to finding inversions that are more harmonically congruent with each other, it's very simple. Identify the commonality from one chord to the next and maintain it. So this is why visual help of using a bigger screen. If you play the F here and then you play the C here, look at how big my movement is. But if you play the C here, the common thread between the two is that your thumb is on the C. Motion, sure. aka economy of motion, and remember, like my mother used to say, pay attention to the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention to the 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 mechanical motion, the tone cohesiveness will take care of itself. So, all right.